Hi guys, how's it going? Ivano here with a new guide on the best stats for all classes. If you're one of the guys that just wants to skip to the end of the video, I will put the summary in a little table here. So what is this guide about? Um, I think this is mostly for new or maybe returning players, uh, because I get asked a lot, uh, you know, how much crit do I need on power attack? Uh, is there a soft cap on crit? How much alacrity do I need? Which classes need accuracy? So I just wanted to summarize a little guide on, on all the gearing stats that you need for, for the different classes. First of all, when we talk about stats for PvP, in general, we differentiate between the primary stats. That would be things like mastery, endurance, power, and the tertiary stats, which is critical, alacrity, and accuracy. These are at least the ones that matter for DPS. We're not going to be talking about tank stats. So when it comes to optimizing your gear, People typically talk about the tertiary stats, so the distribution between critical, alacrity, and accuracy. Why is that the case? Well, it's because the primary stats you cannot really optimize a lot. They just sort of come with your gear, and if you are careful to buy the correct PvP gear at the vendor, so the one that's for your DPS spec, if you're a DPS, then your gear will already have the correct stats on it. So you cannot really optimize the mastery, endurance, and power. Um, other than making sure if you have the hide and seek quest where you get the 336 mods that you buy the ones that have the lowest endurance and the highest power um, or in case of the armorings for example make sure you buy these ones they have the high mastery and the low endurance and don't buy the tank ones accidentally so if you have this cover then you don't need to worry about your primary stats um, if you have full augments data crons and everything they should look roughly something like this but the really interesting part is really optimizing the tertiary stats so we're going to be mostly talking about those ones starting with alacrity. So what does alacrity do? In a nutshell, it just makes all of your attacks faster, right? So it speeds up cast times, makes a dot tick faster, it improves your resource regeneration, um, it can shorten your cooldowns, and makes it so that basically you just can do more attacks per fight, which means more damage overall. So whereas critical will make sure that you get more crits and bigger hits, alacrity means you get more of them faster. So for Alacrity, for most DPS specs, I recommend stacking it to something around 2200. A little bit more is fine. Why this specific number? So in Star Wars, as you might know, there is something called the global cooldown, meaning that if I spam an ability, even though it is instant and doesn't have a cooldown, I cannot do, I cannot do this twice immediately, right? So there is a global cooldown here. The global cooldown in uh, this game is normally 1.5 seconds meaning that you can only do one action every 1.5 seconds. And in between, there will be this animation and the cooldown. Now, Alacrity makes it so that the global cooldown time can get reduced, which again means that you basically get off more attacks per fight. In the case of my power attack and all of these specs, which I'm recommending to go for 2200 Alacrity, you can reduce your global cooldown from 1.5 seconds to 1.4 seconds. The magic number you need to shoot for is 7.15% alacrity. You can see that here in your character screen. If you go on details and you scroll down, you will see that my 2265 alacrity rating gives me an alacrity of 7.77%. Anything above 7.15% is fine. That is the, the breakpoint where your global cooldown gets reduced from 1.5 seconds to 1.4 seconds. Now, this is a little bit more than. Uh, the theoretical 2054 alacrity that you would need to get exactly 7.15, which is the breakpoint if you ever hear the term. Um, this is just to smooth out the animations a little bit more, account for server lag. Um, yeah, just go with this. This has been tested. This is what everyone pretty much is using, and it simply works. Now, three specs in the game get an alacrity buff in their combat style tree. These three specs are Arsenal and Carnage, which each do get a 3% buff, so that means they only need 1,100 alacrity um, to get to the 7.15%. Um, another way of thinking about this is Arsenal and Carnage basically needs need, uh, two enhancements to get to the breakpoint. Um, and then there's Lightning, which gets a 5% buff when they are casting and then combat, meaning that Lightning only needs uh, one enhancement to get to the 1.4 GCD breakpoint. So that's very nice and something to keep in mind if you play one of these specs. If you want to read more about Alacrity, how it works, um, and some of the interesting side effects that come with it, 
I will post a link in the description so you can do some further reading. Keep in mind that some of these guides that I'm going to post are a little bit outdated, so they're from 6.0 or even earlier patches. So while the, the values in there might be different now, the ratings which you need are higher since we're in 7.2 right now, the principles are still the same. Next up is accuracy. Now accuracy, first of all, what does it do? If you play a lot of PvE, then you will have probably seen that um, accuracy makes it so your attacks will be less likely to be defended against. In PvP, it is less important than in PvE, simply because force and tech attacks, so that would be energy burst, for example, as a tech attack. Actually, most of the power attacks, um, attacks are uh, tech attacks, which do yellow damage, um, and they cannot be defended against in PvP. So in PvP, typically, Accuracy is less important than it is in PvE, right? So in PvE, I think everyone runs 10% all the time for operations. In PvP, it really depends whether your class does mostly yellow damage or white damage. So in the cheat sheet, you can see on most of the classes, which are all of the classes that do more than 50% yellow damage, I do not run accuracy. A couple of notes that um, this is, for example, AP power tech. Yes, Railshot is your biggest damage dealing ability, but overall, if you look at your combat locks, it only accounts for roughly 20% of your overall DPS. So that means 80% is coming from yellow damage. And um, another thing to note is that even if you miss a Railshot on occasion, uh, you will still build your energy loads. So it's actually not that bad to miss a Railshot once in a while. Um, another note is, uh, and I'll put a link to this video up here, um, is that on power tech anyway, you should be running the neural trigger tactical, which makes it so that your opponents will be stunned. And if your opponent is stunned, then they cannot defend against your attack. So another reason why power tech, in my opinion, really doesn't need accuracy. Um, and you can just dump the remaining points in critical. Similar things are true for engineering. Engineering is also, also mostly tech damage, 75% or more. So I do not rank an accuracy on, on that spec. Hatred is a similar thing. Um, Vengeance also, all of these classes that really thrive on dot spreads and a lot of AOE damage, um, you want to maximize for that. And again, accuracy doesn't do anything for, for yellow damage, so you can, uh, you can just run zero here. Lethality and virulence are interesting. They obviously do a lot of dot damage, but uh, the key ability for lethality is Toxic Blast, which makes your dots deal more damage, um, and that's actually a uh, white damage attack so it can get defended against and you can miss it and that's really annoying you lose a lot of damage um, so you want to run five percent accuracy on lethality just to make sure that that doesn't happen and ruins your ruins your nice dot spreads similar thing is true for for virulence um, on virulence a lot of your damage comes from cal cal is a white damage attack which triggers your dots so if you miss the cal you will not get the additional dot ticks and that's why i also recommend to run five percent accuracy on virulence if you want to read more about accuracy in general, I will put another link here. And I recommend to check out the Theory Crafter Discord, um, to which I will also link in the description. Last but not least, critical rating. So what does critical rating do? It increases the chance that all of your abilities or attacks will hit critically, meaning they will do an extra, um, in my case, 68% of damage. Sometimes when people talk about critical, they are saying things like you should never go above 4,000 crit because then you will hit the soft cap. Or what is the soft cap for crit? Should you ever have more than 5,000 crit? So when people are talking about soft caps and hard caps, the only really important thing um, that you need to think about is that there aren't really any, any caps in the game. There's really no point at which critical will make your damage worse. Critical is, is always a good stat. What people are talking about when they're talking about soft caps is the principle of diminishing returns. To show that quickly, what that means, we'll take off the, all of the gear. You can see here right now we have a 14.6% critical chance. Now watch what happens when we put on one item with crit on it. It goes to 18.7%, right? So an increase of over 4% um, from the first 600 critical rating. Now, if I would put on another item with crit, now we're at 22.0, so a little bit less than 4%. Putting on another item with crit, maybe the main hand, we go from 22.0 to 25.1. So now we're only a little bit above 
3% per, per item. This is what diminishing return means, right? The more you add of a stat, the less additional benefit in critical chance it will give you. Now, if you get to a point of 4,000, 5,000 crit, then adding another item with crit on it will only give you maybe 1% additional critical chance. Meaning that the more you have of a stat, the less an additional piece will bring you. And this is what people are talking about when they are talking about soft caps in crit. Um, and that's all there is. Now, in PvE, you will never really reach these soft caps because in PvE, as I already said, you need to pretty much have 10% accuracy on all classes. But in PvP, that's not the case. Um, actually, there's only one class, which is the Marksmanship Sniper, that you really need the 10% because Marksmanship does more than 90% of its damage in um, white attacks. But on all other classes, um, since you're only ever going to go for the 2200 alacrity, and on most classes, 5 or less percent of accuracy, you have a lot of points left and you can simply dump them to critical. So I recommend on most classes to put as much as you can in critical um, for AP, Pyro, Vengeance, Madness, and all of those. If you can get to 4800 or more, depending on if you have gold augments or run some, some other augments, that's fine. You can even go above 5000 critical on something like Lightning Sorg. That's also fine. It will not ruin your damage. I, I tested all of that, um, and the difference is, is very small at best. Now, if you're on Lightning or you are already at 5000 critical, what you can do is you can put some Mastery Augments in there. They will give you a little bit more bonus damage. Um, but yeah, to, to be honest, it doesn't really make a big difference. So whether you put everything in crit, or you stop at 4,800 crit and put the rest in mastery, the difference in damage is so small that you will not even notice it. Just make sure you stick to these general principles that I, that I outlined in the little cheat sheet here, and especially make sure you hit the alacrity breakpoints. That's it for today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And by the way, guys, we reached 100 subs on the channel recently, so I wanted to also take this opportunity and thank all of you guys a lot for your support. Uh, it means a lot to me, and hopefully I can keep producing a lot of more content for the Star Wars PvP community. So that's it for today. Hope you guys have a good time, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.